Um, he's a uh, comic legend. Now, a lot of you guys have heard his jokes. You know it was his jokes because you didn't see him. But he's just wrote, written on Seinfeld. You know what I'm saying? You've heard yada, yada, yada. He, he, he did all that right there. So I want you to put your hands together for a very funny man. I'm going to like him. You like him. And I love his hairstyle. Everybody put your hands together for Peter. You ready? Mailman. I, um, I guess most of you know me as the guy who impregnated Roe from Roe v. Wade. <laughs> I said to her, look, you're pregnant, you don't want to have the baby, you don't have to make a federal case out of it. <laughs> When I have difficult experiences like that, I tend to, you know, try to get out of town to get, you know, clear out my head. Um, you know, like, just recently I was going through something that was just so none of your business. <laughs> and um, I decided to drive down to Rancho Mirage, but when I got close, there was nothing there. Um, so, um, I made a left turn and um, I went to the Grand Canyon and I was sitting like at the ledge of the Grand Canyon looking out at this vast expanse and suddenly it dawned on me. I realized that my problems are so much more important than everyone else's. <laughs> Hey, I have a question. Um, if you're convicted of murdering someone who drives a Prius, <laughs> do you get both the gas chamber and the electric chair? <laughs> you know what, don't even answer that. You know, like, you know, I hate when I come up with annoying questions like that, you know? I, I to tell you the truth, I just, I haven't been in the mood for myself all day today. I know that sounds weird because, you know, everybody in the world knows that, you know, like I'm the, like the greatest guy to hang out with, but, you know, like, and I get that. I totally get it. Um, like last week, I uh, went with myself um, to the Museum of Tolerance. Hey. Can you believe that the Museum of Tolerance has never had an exhibit devoted to lactose? <laughs> they did have this incredibly interesting exhibit about Islam and, um, you know, I learned that Islam is really actually a very beautiful religion and it's not fair to let 75 million bad apples spoil the whole bunch. <laughs> there was this woman there who was wearing this huge cross around her neck and I said to her, boy, you must be really into... Um... And she says, Jesus Christ? And I said, yes, yeah, sorry, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> The museum kind of, you know, like made me interested in my roots, so um, I joined Ancestry.com and um, it turns out that my great, 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 great grandfather was a Klingon. <laughs> he was um, in his spaceship going to the Andromeda galaxy because, as you know, they have no sales tax. And um, he somehow wound up in Eastern Europe. And he met 
Esther Moskowitz, and he married her against the wishes of everybody back on his home planet, because um, even though the Klingons had never even heard of the planet Earth, they somehow sensed that they should dislike Jews. <laughs> I thought I'd just try that. <laughs> So, um, in January, I started, um, uh, I started binge watching 60 Minutes. I'm up to 1971 now. <laughs> um, I took a break to go out on a date with a woman, you know, of a certain age. Well, she was 22. Drives my friends crazy, they're like, what do you even talk about with somebody that young? As if when I go out with someone my own age, you know, we spend the first hour of the date reviewing the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> so I took her to this um, Italian restaurant called Al Dente, um, as if in Italy there are restaurants called Undercooked, you know. And, and um, <clears throat> You know, the waiter comes over and he says, um, the special of the night is the Lake Superior Whitefish. And I say, no, I don't want that. Um, I'm, pro I'm, I'm boycotting Lake Superior because I think it's a little smug that you have to call yourself Lake Superior. I mean, they're all great lakes. Um, my date ordered the... Um, heirloom tomato salad and you know I'm thinking why would anybody want to eat a tomato that's been in someone's family for generations <laughs> but you know what let her make her own mistake she's young actually she was very bright you know she was homeschooled and I know what you're thinking like her parents must be right-wing religious freaks or something like that but she was valedictorian <laughs> so you can't judge is what I'm saying Another thing I really liked about her is that she had several tattoos. And it's really good to go out with a girl who's got tattoos because then you know going in that you're with someone who's willing to make a huge mistake. <laughs> the upshot of the date is that I learned a lot about transgender people. <laughs> Did you know that 83% of people who go through, who be, you know, who go transgender, they, when they change their name, they keep the same initials. It's like, I'm willing to swap out my genitalia, but those monogram towels, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> oh, this is sad. My cousin Barbara is in an irreversible coma. I know what you're thinking, white girl problems. <laughs> Several times we've thought about removing the feeding tube, but she's in a very high-end facility and the food is just amazing. <laughs> um, Barbara was already a widow. Her husband was a doctor and he was, you know, like one of those incredible doctors who still made house calls, but See, the problem came in because he was a gynecologist. <laughs> I never got the whole story, but there was some kind of misunderstanding. <laughs> and he wound up dying peacefully in his sleep after being shot four times in the head and twice in the chest. <laughs> now, they had a daughter they have a daughter who I'm very close to and she's getting married and she wanted me to walk her down the aisle. And there's something that bugs me about the whole concept of giving away the bride, so it just seems un-American. So I sold her. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you know, many, many years ago, I had first row tickets to see Michael Jackson in concert. It was amazing. I walk all the way down the aisle, get right to the stage, and I look over. 
and Rosa Parks is sitting in my seat. She refused to get up. You know, I said to her, this isn't really like the bus, you know. You know, the bus was kind of like, you know, festival seating. She still wouldn't get up. Um, so I said to her, um, look, I'll tell you what, can you at least give me your stub so I could have a seat to see the concert? And she agreed to that. She gave me her stub. And I don't know if you've ever been to a Michael Jackson concert, but the first, you know, like 50 rows were all white people. I'm in like the 96th row. I sit down next to this black guy and he looks up at me and he goes, what are you doing here? You know, and what are you doing all the way back here? And, you know, I didn't want to go into the whole story, so I told him that, you know, I gave up my ticket for Rosa Parks. <laughs> and one thing led to the next, and I won the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> and with the money I got for the Peace Prize, I got tickets to another Michael Jackson show. <laughs> This time with backstage passes. And after the show, I was actually got to talk to Michael and he seemed a little run down, tired. So I referred him to a doctor in LA. <laughs> the point of the story is, if not for Rosa Parks, Michael Jackson would be alive today. <laughs> I feel a certain obligation to tell you that parts of the story I just told you were fictionalized. <laughs> I actually had only third row tickets. And um, there was something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've never actually spoken to a black person. <laughs> but, you know, super high on my bucket list. <laughs> Peter, everybody, and uh, <laughs> Peter is what you would call in the comedy world uh, a beast, okay? So if you guys don't know what he just did to y'all, he just beasted y'all out in comedy. <laughs> what did he just do? I mean, he, that's, that's what you call an animal, a gorilla. You know, he, he 